undesirable circumstances, they literally can't touch you. They can't find you. They don't have access to you because you're not on the same vibrational playing field. Welcome to Super Normalize, the podcast where we challenge the conventional, break boundaries and normalize the seemingly supernatural. Join me, CJ, as we explore less uncharted realms of existence and unravel the mysteries of life experience. My treasured listeners, if you have a life story or healing modality or unique knowledge that you'd love to share, reach out to me at Supernormalized, that's Supernormalized with a Z, at Proton.me. Let's together embrace acceptance of the supernatural and unusual as what it really is, completely normal. Today on Supernormalize, you'll meet Lucy Tasnik, a serial entrepreneur, national speaker, and coach extraordinaire. With a background in quantum physics understanding, she empowers you to dream big, rewire your mind, and achieve unprecedented success. This was a great conversation with Lucy. We went over her understanding of the mind and how you can actually change it in ways that actually assist you and your way in the world and in doing so, helping others. I'm sure you'll enjoy this episode. I certainly did. All right, enjoy. Welcome to Supernormalize, Lucy Tasnik. So Lucy, we got in contact through a connection service for interviews for podcasts, and uh, you have a bit of a story to tell about how you help people in the world from basically being stuck into being action oriented on individuals, helping their energy flow again, connecting them to the infinite field, really, basically like all of the flow of life. How did you get to do this? I mean, tell us about your story first. Um, yeah, sure. I would love to. Thank you, CJ, so much for having me on. Um, so grateful for the opportunity to connect and share my story. Um, I like to say that it all started. Uh, I grew up in Detroit, just outside of Detroit, actually, in the suburbs of Detroit, and I was a little girl with a big dream. And as Napoleon Hill always states, the starting point for all achievement is a burning desire. And I can say with absolute certainty that ever since I can remember, I have been obsessed with horses to the point where I would beg my dad every single day, dad, please buy me a horse. Um, unfortunately, my parents were blue collar workers. My mom had two factory jobs. So the idea of horses was just totally out of the realm of possibilities. But I never gave up on my dream. In fact, I would even pray at night like, dear God, please let me just dream that I'm riding horses in my dreams. So that way I actually felt like I'd be doing it in real life. And I can't tell you how many times I'd be dreaming that like my left foot would go in the stirrup and I'm swinging my right leg over and then poof, I'd wake up. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I was so close. And uh, anyways, it wasn't long before I realized I had to take matters into my own hands. And so the day that I turned 16 was the same day that I got my driver's license and the same day that I put my Craigslist ad online, which basically said, I'll ride your horse for free. And at that point in my life, I realized that if you can follow your passion and figure out where your, ta where your talents lie and what your skill set is, and you can exploit that in the service of others, you are going to be met with unprecedented success and true fulfillment. So um, that's pretty much what I did. I'm like, how can I ride? How can I serve you? How can I ride your, or how does your horse need any training? And sure enough, I had all of these yahoos calling me with their crazy, unbroke, wild horses that hadn't been touched, worked, or ridden in five or 10 years. And here I am, this like overconfident 16 year old with a brand new driver's license, driving all over God's country to uh, ride these horses. And uh, next thing you know, I'm getting bucked off, thrown off flipped over on top of, you name it, I experienced it. 
And uh, I never gave up. And it's kind of like, you know, life is going to throw you curveballs and you're going to fall down and you're going to eat dirt. But the most important thing is just never giving up and staying laser focused on your goals and not letting anything stop you. Just that relentless pursuit to continue. So, um, it didn't matter how many times I got bucked off. I was just the happiest thing to crawl back on. And it's kind of like, if you ask any successful business owner or entrepreneur, um, what's the key to success? Like, oh, were you lucky? And it's like, no, it's not about luck. It's about, I failed more times than most. And what I mean by that is like, when people say like, wow, Lucy, you're such a great rider. It's like the horses have taught me everything I know. And I know that because I failed so many times, I've fallen off so many times, um, I've never had any professional or formal instruction or education. It's been the horses that have taught me everything. So essentially, um, I ended up meeting this horse dealer who would get like 50 horses in a week. And I had to, I had to ride everything and I had to sell it fast, quick and cheap because if I didn't sell it fast enough, it was getting shipped to Canada, which means it was going to go for meat in the slaughterhouses. Oh, no, no. So here I am a 16 year old girl on a mission to save all the horses. And, uh, that was really my, my first step into the world of, of, of life as an entrepreneur, because it was like, the sky is the limit. Um, yeah. whatever, how, how much, how much do I want to put in is exactly how much I'm going to put out. Do I want to ride five horses, 10 horses, 20 horses today? Um, and that's what I did. I, I, uh, bought, trained and sold horses throughout high school, throughout college. And after college, I got scooped up into the corporate world. And then all throughout college, I continued to sell horses, um, until I decided to quit my comfy, cozy corporate job and take a leap of faith, which was hands down one of the scariest things I've ever done and uh, take a chance on myself. And so that's what I did. I quit my corporate job, pursued my passion, was able to build and scale um, a business where I now buy, train and sell horses all over the country. And I accidentally opened one of Michigan's largest public trail riding companies where we take out guided trail rides through Kensington Park. And it's, it's cool and it's fun and it's exciting because everything has happened, has happened very naturally and unfolded very organically. And again, I don't say all of this to say, oh, hey, look at me. I say all of this because one of my like fundamental beliefs in life is, is to live, lead and inspire by example. So if I can showcase my story and say, look what I've done, that means that you can absolutely do it too. And along the way, I've picked up some quite extraordinary pieces of, of universal truths, if you will. And, uh, I'm just so excited to talk about quantum physics. And I love teaching people how to leverage the laws of the universe. So that way each person can very intentionally craft the life of their dreams. Excellent. Wow. You're so passionate. That's, that's exciting. That's exciting. I, I I'm really curious though. This, was there something that happened really young with you that made you just go, horses did you, you know just... I don't I I just from the time that I can remember I always remember just being like absolutely enamored by them and I feel like I know I've talked to many people who have just said like the horse bug it's just born within you and it's something that uh like you're born with and then other people who didn't really other people, because of obviously like we teach lessons and we, we have a riding academy and things like that. And sometimes people get a later start and they're like, some people are like, no, I, I always thought horses were kind of cool, but I never really was super interested in them. And then my, my boyfriend brought me horseback riding and my girlfriend brought me horseback riding. And now I'm obsessed with them and I want to learn and I want to go all in. And, and so, and it's almost like once you catch the horse bug, then you got it. And then there's no turning back. So either you're bored with it, or if you're not, you're still susceptible. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It sounds like it's almost uh, like it's genetic. We've actually been um, horse riding, you know, uh, families and everything in the past. So yeah, if that's coming through our timeline from our um, ancestry, of course, you know, horse, why not? <laughs> I so, love that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, how do you help people transform their identity and rewire their subconscious mind to make massive action towards their goals? Yeah. So essentially what we do is we help people rewire their subconscious mind. And it all starts with getting to know pretty much where people are at 
and what their goals, what their vision is. So the first pillar of our program is energy and understanding that energy is our highest form of currency, that we live in a vibrational universe. We live in an attraction-based universe and we don't attract what we want. We attract what we are. So therefore, if we want more love, we have to be more loving. If we want more money, we have to embody the energy of abundance and become more generous. And so just like when we pour out gratitude, the universe hears that our God listens and he's going to place more things in our path that we're going to be grateful for. So it's all about, it's it's basically like the our outer world is a perfect reflection of our inner world. Our What we experience in our 3D reality is the perfect mirror image of what we are experiencing inside of us. So if we're looking at our outside world and we want something to change, we have to understand that we can't control the external world. We can't control of what's outside of us. We can only control what's inside of us. Just like when we're looking at a mirror and we see the mirror frowning back at us, we can't tell the mirror, oh, hey, I want you to, uh, I want you to start smiling or I'm not going to smile until you start smiling. The mirror is just a reflection of yourself and therefore you have to be the change. Just like Gandhi says, the all change starts within ourselves. Be the change you want to see in the world because once we smile, then the reflection will show us the smile back to us. But we can't can't have that idea of I'll smile when, I'll be happy when. It's all about embodying the energy of the desire fulfilled right here, right now. That's why the we that's why Eckhart Tolle talks about the power of now is because that's where all of our power essentially lies. And that's why we're only ever one decision away from a completely different life. Um, and truly understanding this idea of of energy. If we know that we are where we are today based on every single decision that we've made up until this point, we can definitively say that decision shapes our destiny. Well, what's the one thing that controls or influences every decision we make? It's our emotional state. So that's why I like to teach my clients how to access and maintain peak emotional states. And you're like, okay, well, what's a peak emotional state? Think about the last time that you felt just so excited, so passionate, so on fire, like you were unstoppable and you can hurdle over any obstacle that was thrown your way. That is a peak state. And then I like to ask people, well, how many hours a day do you spend in a peak state? How many hours a week? How many hours a month? And a lot of times, I mean, people aren't spending nearly as much time as they should be because what happens is we are all conditioned beings and we unfortunately are conditioned to lower vibrational emotions like stress, like fear, frustration, anger, overwhelm. And when we're operating in these lower vibrations, we're making drastically different decisions than we would be if we were operating in these peak emotional states. And so that's why it's so important to become aware of the thoughts that we're thinking and the emotions that we're feeling. So that way we can change it. We can pivot. We can very intentionally raise our vibration. So that way we're making decisions that are in alignment with the goals that we set for ourselves. So that's like, that's the first step or the first pillar of our program. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Like it it sounds like you're helping people to um, tune into the right vibration and uh, then flow with it. And uh, yeah, excellent. So what challenges, um, do you pose to individuals and businesses and entrepreneurs and professionals uh, when it comes to um, helping them step outside their comfort zones and dream big? Oh my gosh. So our, we, we live in a society right now that's just, it's full of distractions and yeah. it's, it's full of, um, so. and, and like our focus is one of the most valuable resources that we have. Oh, I love your coffee cup. It says grateful with a heart on it. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, I, I feel like I need one of those. Um <laughs> So, uh, which one call it? we live in a society that's just, it's, there's so many distractions and there's so many things fighting for our attention. And it's like where our focus goes, our energy flows. And so with social media and this idea of like comparing our lives to everybody else, like we know that comparison is the thief of all joy. Um, 
And essentially we get conditioned into these, like I said, these lower vibrational feelings where it's like, we forget what feeling good feels like we get, and then we identify because we identify with these lower vibrations of stress or overwhelm or anxiety because we've felt them for so many days, so many weeks, so many months, so many years that we then take them on as our own characteristics, our own personality traits. And then those, those, ener those lower vibrational frequencies, if you will, of like stress, overwhelm, fear, whatever it may be, they become very familiar to us. So when we talk about the comfort zone, this idea of our comfort zone and how to step outside of our comfort zone, the comfort zone is called the comfort zone, but it's actually should be called the familiar zone because right. some things that we call our comfort zone are actually, some people are, are very familiar with pain and suffering or, or stress or fear or anxiety, mm -hmm. but that's all that they know. And that's what they feel comfortable with. That's what they're familiar with. So it's a totally foreign idea to take 10 minutes every single day and gift yourself that time to do something like write out your intentions or create a gratitude list or spend time in meditation. And as, as, as silly or as woohoo out there as those things might seem to be, especially um, with some of the businessmen that I work with, that they once thought like, okay, that's a bunch of pie in the sky woohoo nonsense. It's like, no, these are powerful tools that are, are backed by science that show you that when you're like, where, what you focus on is what you feel. Even if what you're focusing on isn't even real, it still has um, your mind and your body are very, very intrinsically connected. And if we can focus on a thought, we are going to feel the emotions that that thought generates. And so therefore we are like, the beautiful thing is that we have freedom of focus. We can choose, we can pick and choose what it is that we want to focus on but we get stuck in these patterns. We get stuck in patterns of focus, patterns of thought, patterns of language, and patterns of physiology. So basically, um, are we choosing to always see the silver lining? Are we choosing to see the beauty and the lesson learned? Or are we just stuck in um, kind of a, a, a complaining mentality where like we're always looking for what's wrong with life or we're looking to see how life wronged us or we're playing the role of the victim. Anytime like that our focus is in the wrong space, it's going to um, really disempower us and lower our vibration. And when we're operating at a lower vibration, we don't have access to higher vibrational people, places, things, experiences, things that are going to light us up, satisfy us and, and excite us. So patterns of focus is one. Patterns of thought are another. What are you used to thinking about, feeling about? Patterns of language. How are you choosing? What, what are the words that you're choosing to use? Because when we talk about quantum physics and understanding that we live in a vibrational universe where, where everything is energy, everything is energy, and all energy is governed by law, we soon understand that our thoughts also carry an energy or a frequency to them. Our thoughts are powerful. Our words are powerful. And if we're choosing to use language or words that don't serve us, um, even unconsciously, we're doing ourselves a huge disservice. So it's really becoming conscious of these unconscious patterns. And the same thing, patterns of physiology, just like I said, the mind and body are very much so um, just intrinsically connected. So people, like if you take a step back and really analyze your life, most people do the same thing every single morning, every single afternoon, and every single night. We are by nature creatures of habit. And we also have um, patterns that we are very like habitually moving our bodies in. And if you look at a depressed person, they're probably not spending a lot of time um, at the gym or dancing or moving or whatever it is. Um, because that's not, because when you move your body and you dance and or you're lifting weights, that's going to immediately raise your vibration and put you in a, in a happier state of mind. So stepping outside of your comfort zone essentially is being able to recognize these unconscious patterns and then doing a pattern interrupt and being able to replace them with better patterns, better habits that are going to take you to the next level in life and business. 
You said patent interrupt. That got my attention. It sounds like you've done some NLP as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big Tony fan. Um, and <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm trained as in uh, NLP as well, uh, master practitioner. So, yeah, I understand the um, idea of the patent interrupt and, um, yeah, and how actually um, – The world seems to feed back whatever you give out. And uh, I'd even say that's like a, a feedback from God. It's like, you know, imagine if um, God wants to give you everything that you ever wanted in the universe. And if you, want, you know, keep on saying, I don't need anything. I just want to live this life as it is. Then that's what you get. So Yes, absolutely. Ask and you shall receive. But that's it. um, I was actually just on a, I was just on a podcast last night, and it was I think it, I don't remember if it was I don't it was like it was John something, and he said, "Ask not in in y'all and and ye shall not have," which is basically the same thing flipped around. Yeah. So many people. Um, one of the problems is that we are not conditioning our minds to want more. And we settle. And when we settle, it's like we're either growing or dying. There's no in between. Mm. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to always have a goal because Mm. a goal is a spiritual seed. Just like Dr. Wayne Dyer said, we're not human beings having a spiritual experience. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. And we're meant to grow and evolve and expand. Um, Abraham Hicks says that the, the purpose of life is joyous expansion. And so therefore, if we don't have a goal in front of us that's pushing us towards the next best version of ourselves, um, we're going to fundamentally be be depressed or unsatisfied or we're going to feel stuck And so that's what I help people do is really figure out where they're at and then figure out where they want to go, whether it's it's um, mentally, physically, financially, spiritually, and help people uh, just to create a map. We I do a whole vision extraction process where I, lo I love posing the question, if you could have life any way that you wanted it. If, if you had unlimited resources and money were of no concern, what would your life look like? How would you build it? Let's use your imagination. And to your point, so many people nowadays, like we're so conditioned, so trained to use our imagination in all the wrong ways to use it to worry or stress or fear things that aren't even going to happen instead of imagining everything that could go right. And when you start implementing imagination, the way that it was meant to be used, that's when you like tune in to those higher vibrational frequencies of, of divine guidance and divine downloads and you step into the receiving mode. So that's when it gets really exciting. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It reminds me of a quote by um, uh, a consciousness explorer and doctor, um, John C. Lilly. He actually wrote that um, in the province of the mind, what one believes to be true is true or becomes true within certain limits to be found experientially and experimentally. These limits are further beliefs to be transcended. In the mind, there are no limits. And I would say in reality, there are no limits too. It's just a matter of um, where do you think you are and real realize that's just... what limit you've put on yourself right now. Oh, I totally agree. It's wild because the only, like when you step back and think about it, like the only limitations that we have are the limitations that we place upon ourselves. And it's like our comfort zone, our paradigm, our belief system is what's holding us hostage in the land of mediocrity. And if we can challenge ourselves, push ourselves to push past what we believe to be um, true for ourselves and really get intentional and be like, wait, what thoughts am I thinking? Are these thoughts serving me? What are my beliefs? When you start to really analyze, like, what is a belief? A belief is nothing more than a thought that you keep thinking. And that's the beauty of meditation is it allows you to become aware of the thoughts that you're thinking. And then all of a sudden, instead of, instead of signing up to this idea that I am my thoughts, I am my beliefs, you start to realize, wait, I am the observer of my thoughts and I have the power Exactly. to pick and choose which thoughts, which beliefs I want to subscribe to. And so many people, instead of challenging their belief systems, they'll defend their belief systems. And it's like when you defend your own belief system, 
you're, you're, you're defending your own limitations. You're fighting for your limitations. When you fight for your limitations, you're going to keep your limitations. So that's why I love that. Like Dr. Wayne Dyer says, have a mind that is open to everything and attached to nothing. Cause that's when real miracles will step in. Mm, it sounds like the Zen mind. And it also sounds like what we're both describing here is almost like a magical experience of life that comes to you, making everything yeah. uh, more exciting in the everyday and in, in every moment. Absolutely. I love yeah. that. That's why I'm like a, such a huge fan of meditation. I tell everybody, I'm like, if there's a one thing that I would recommend everybody start doing immediately that I guarantee you is going to garner immediate results and elevate every single area of your life, it's gifting yourself 10 minutes every single day. Yeah. So when I, when I was in, um, when I was working corporate, uh, I did corporate where I like got suited up in high heels um, and it was like, it was like suit by day and then like, uh, mud boots by night with the horses. Um, <laughs> and while I was in corporate, I would do these Excel spreadsheets and they were like miles long, just thousands, thousands of lines. And oh, for goodness. hours and hours, every single day, I would listen to Dr. Wayne Dyer in my headphones. And then I would be taking notes. And then through his work, I stumbled upon the teachings of Abraham Hicks. And then after attending, um, my first Abraham Hicks con, uh, conference that is what kickstarted my meditation journey and uh now i like to tell everybody i'm just like just start meditating just just gift yourself that time <laughs> it does it's 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 amazing sort of tool i do it every day at least once i used to do it two to three times but uh the days have been very squeezy on time lately so even once a day is enough and uh it sort of like what i what i find with meditation it short circuits um any stress that's going on at that moment. And then in doing that, yeah. it allows you to become refreshed and uh, reset for the rest of that day. So you actually see everything differently again. And uh, it's so yeah. much, it gives you so many benefits by doing that. And it basically makes a lot of uh, problems just roll off your back like water. If, um, if they come to you, you're like, Oh, I can solve that. But it's not like something you panic about in the past. If you just caught up in all of your stress. Oh my God. Yes. I totally agree. I totally agree. I like to say that when you go into like that meditative state, like you're quieting your mind. And if you know that we think on average 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day and 90% of those thoughts tend to be negative, um, when you're able to quiet that mind, quiet your mind and quiet that voice in your head, it's like all of a sudden, all of your stress dissolves, all of your worries wash away. You can let go of any fear or doubt or limiting beliefs, basically anything that's weighing you down, you can just let go of. And then immediately your vibration will start to rise. It's like when your vibration starts to rise and like, just like you said, it's like you start to feel better. It gives you a different perspective. And then I like, I'm a huge proponent of like your subconscious mind is most susceptible right when you wake up and right when you go to sleep, that's when it's in theta waves. And so that's why it's, if you're doing like morning routines or evening routines, those are when your mind's most uh, susceptible to uh, new ideas or change. And so if people like, just like you said, like if you're able to do a morning meditation and afternoon meditation and evening meditation, heck yeah, rock on more power to you. Um, if you're not able to do that, I would highly recommend people do the morning meditation because what that does is that sets the bar high, that raises your vibration up here and that sets you up for success. So that way, as you're moving through the day, no matter what crosses your path, um, it has to be vibrating at this, at this frequency. Um, it, that therefore bad news, um, angry people, um, just undesirable circumstances, they literally can't touch you. They can't find you. They don't have access to you because you're not on the same vibrational playing field. Um, that's kind of how I like to explain it. It's like, you're literally setting yourself up for success and all it takes is 10 to 15 minutes every single morning. Do you have a method to your meditation? Or is there any rec methods that you could recommend to the listeners? Um, gosh, to be honest with you, I have like a whole arsenal of meditations in my phone that I've pretty <laughs> much just compiled over the years. And there's so many different kinds. Um, I like to talk to people about meditation and, and, and just remind them that 
there's so many different kinds, whether we're talking about a guided meditation, an abundance meditation, breathwork meditation, mantra meditation, a music meditation, a silent meditation, whatever that looks like. And it kind of like, it's kind of like a, kind of like when you go to the buffet, I encourage everybody to try a different meditation every single day. So that way they can figure out what resonates best with them. I usually will say that like some of the guided meditations are a little bit um, more like beginner friendly, user friendly, because in like, in like a more of like a silent meditation, people might start questioning, like, what am I supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to be thinking? How am I supposed to be feeling? Like, I don't really like know how to navigate this. Um, I might, I'm still, I can still hear the voice in my head. I must not be doing it right. Um, <laughs> and then it's just like, what I like to remind people <laughs> is that like, we're alive. It's not like we're dead. You're never going to be able to shut that voice off. But the beauty and the magic and the power of meditation is that it is a practice. And when you do close your eyes and you focus in on your breath, all of a sudden you'll hear that voice come in or, or you'll, you'll hear the thought. And the power is in acknowledging that there is a thought present and then lovingly release it and then focusing back on your breath. And then five, 10, 20 seconds later, another thought is going to flow in. But instead of going down the rabbit hole of like, oh, I got to... Um, I got to go grocery shopping and then I got to pick up the kids and then I got to make dinner and oh, I still need to call for that appointment. Da, 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 da. Or even if you do fall down that rabbit hole thought, that's still okay. It's still stopping and being like, oh wait, I'm thinking again. And then just lovingly release that idea and then focusing back on your breath. And in doing that, the reason why that's so important and so powerful is because it sets you up for success in your day-to-day -day life. So when you're moving through traffic and somebody cuts you off, instead of um, responding and, and anger and animosity, um, which might be what you had unconsciously done in the past. And, and maybe you do that. Maybe you're like, oh, what a jerk, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, that's not, that's not who I want to show up as. This is out of alignment with who I want to be in the world or like that doesn't feel good to me. Um, one of like the biggest most clear examples for me was after I had started meditating, I remember I was with, um, I was with this, with this guy and all of a sudden we were having, he had a horse and he had a horse and I was training it. And he was like, trying to tell me what to do, or I don't really remember exactly. All I remember is that we got into this big argument or this big fight. And the next thing, you know, like I am yelling at this guy, like yelling. And in that moment, I like stopped. And just like we talked about, it was like a huge pattern interrupt. And I stopped and I like looked around and I was like, whoa, I'm like, I'm like, I'm literally like yelling, like we're yelling and cussing each other. Like, why are we even doing this? I'm like, this isn't the person I want to be. This isn't how I want to show up. And even more importantly, I am giving you my power by allowing you to rock my world and allowing you to cause me such anger, turmoil, and stress. I'm like, I'm going to take my power back. I'm going to smile. I'm going to choose to laugh at this and just be like, listen, it's okay that we're disagreeing. This is my viewpoint. This is your viewpoint. Let's move forward in a positive way. And it was like in that moment, because I had like just started meditating like before I was allowing these unconscious patterns to run my life. Once we like all change starts, all, all change is preceded by awareness. We can't change what we're unaware of. And that's why meditation is so important because it literally means to become aware of oneself. So the more that we're doing, the more that we're practicing meditation, the more we become aware of our thoughts, of our words, of these unconscious patterns that are running our life. And once we become aware of them, that's when they no longer have control over us and we can step into the next version of ourselves. Mm, it sounds like self-awareness then, like you had in that moment, is key to actually um, turning things around and changing all of your life. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. How do you actually keep your um, state in check and know what you want and what bridges the gap from where we are to where we want to be? I mean, how, what sort of, how, how do you work with that with people? Yeah. So, um, so first thing is understanding the importance of, of energy and managing your emotions. Next thing is really understanding like desire and getting absolute clarity on what it is that you want. 
because just like we said, like we live in a society full of distractions, um, where they're conditioning us, where they're, where they're conditioning us. Sorry. Uh, (laughs) Oh, you're frozen. Oh no, I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Things happen. (laughs) Um, my, the, my dog ran and disconnected the computer cable. So, um, <laughs> that's a first, I love it. <laughs> this is the first for me too. We have not, uh, came up against that. Um, but what was, I'm sorry, can you just say that last question again, and then we'll get back on track. Yeah. So I was um, talking about, um, Okay, so self-awareness is key in taking back control of your life. Um, We discussed that. And then I asked you, um, so now that you have your personal state in check and um, and you know what you want, what bridges the gap from where you are to where you want to be? Belief. Belief is what bridges the gap. And so what I like to talk about is that um, we can know what we want with absolute clarity and we can have a beautiful vision for our life and our business. But if we don't believe that we're worthy, if we don't believe that we're capable of achieving said thing, there's always going to be a vibrational discrepancy between where we are and that thing that we most long for. It's always going to seem just out of reach. And the belief component of this is really the most important because that's where we get into transforming your your identity and rewiring your subconscious mind because our identity is who we believe that we are fundamentally and if there's one thing that um, all human beings will do is they will always try to show up in integrity with who they believe that they are and if we are where we are based on every single thought action desire decision we've made up until this point, then we can understand that if we want a new, a new reality, a brighter future, a a more healthy body, whatever that looks like, we are going to have to start making different decisions and taking radically different actions to take us to where we want to be. And that essentially means we're going to have to become a different person and embody a new identity. And that is usually what requires the most amount of work is really building a new self image or a new, a new self concept of ourself. Because what that means is death of the ego. And it's like, how long have you been yourself? It served you for many, many, how long have you been you many years? So to really let that all go, um, let all of who you are, um, your, your beliefs, your background, your story, everything that makes you, you like your habits, your desire, just letting all of that go. And then moving forward, um, with this new, better, more brilliant, even more disciplined version of yourself. Like it can be really, really scary. And that's what I help people do step-by-step is transforming your identity. So that way you are taking massive action towards your goals. Mm. So it's like you build up the personality in such a way that uh, the momentum is only forward. Exactly. And one of the ways that we do that is um, dropping into a meditative state and and and, and visualizing the person that's living the life that you desire to have. So what does the highest version of you look like? What do they dress like? How are they speaking? What are the belief systems that they have that you would have to embody? What are their beliefs about life? Um, and how would you have to change your belief system to match that? And it's like once you start embodying the energy of that person, then inevitably inevitably, you will become that person. It's just a matter of time. Mm, excellent, excellent. What is mind hacking and how do we rewire our subconscious mind for success? I mean, it sounds like we've been talking about that the whole way through, really. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So um, obviously meditation is like one of my favorite tools just because whether you're trying to set yourself up for success or if you're just having a bad day or you just feel out of alignment, 
if I'm ever feeling like out of alignment, the first thing that I do is I'm like, okay, guys, like I'm not feeling like me. I'm not acting like me. I'm not like my high vibrational, positive, energetic self. Like, give me just 10 minutes. I'm going to go meditate in the other room. It's like, I go and I meditate and it just like recharges me. And just like you said, it's like a reset. And I come out like a totally different person with a brand new perspective, ready to like conquer the world. And it's like everything that was bothering me is no longer bothering me. It doesn't matter. So meditation is one of those things. Um, another tool that I'm like, I've been doing for eight plus years now are my gratitude lists. So every single, so it's like, we have our morning routine. Well, what's your evening routine? Well, my evening routine is to do a gratitude list. So every single night I'll write out everything that I'm grateful for that day. Um, and it's wild because once in a while, um, I'll have a really bad day and I'll be like, oh, okay, well, time to do my gratitude list. And it's just like, it's so, it's so incredible that like, if I'm not feeling good after spending five or 10 minutes writing out every single thing I have to be grateful for, it's like magic how you just instantly feel better. You feel lighter. Um, it's so powerful. And then at the end of the gratitude list, I'll always do tomorrow's forecast. And I do a couple different ways of intention setting. And tomorrow's forecast is one of them. And it's basically inviting in everything that you'd like to experience or attract the next day. And so it's really just, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of, of living with intention. Um, and so it's whatever it is that you want, whatever it is that you have planned. Um, if you're planning on like working out, I might write like amazing workout with Jen or, um, sometimes I'll put stuff on there. Like, even if I don't have a horse sale scheduled, I'll write horse sale question mark. And then sure enough, uh, it just might manifest just because I wrote it down on the piece of paper. One time I wrote, prosperity. I wrote alignment and prosperity. And I, I, I only, I always write alignment and abundance on mine. Um, cause I always like, like to invite alignment and abundance into my days. Um, and I remember the first time I had ever wrote prosperity, just like as a whim, I ended up finding an envelope with over $10,000 cash in it the next day. And I'm like, oh my God, I wrote prosperity on my gratitude list last night. <laughs> like how <laughs> wild it like, so some things that just like happen, like they, oh, it's like God or the universe, like never fails to surpass my expectations, but you have to do the work. You have to set yourself up for success. You have to raise your vibration very intentionally to step into that receiving mode. So that way miracles or blessings or delightful surprises will seek you out and find you um just along the way as you you know it's all about trusting the process and enjoying each step of the journey it sounds like a, an amazingly healthy habit and um, also severely beneficial by the sound of it uh that i think yeah. anyone could really take up that's really really simple and so easy and um and, and wise a wise way to actually treat yourself and the world mm. yeah so really Lucy, cool. we're I, coming to the end, so, but, I, um, it, did you have something to say there? Um, no, I was just going to say that, and, and it goes up like the same way. Like if you're in, in your morning routine, if you incorporate like different journaling practices, like asking yourself different questions, like who do I want to be today? Um, how do I want to show up in the world? Who can I serve? Like asking those questions, like there's so much power in service when you're able to give back. It's just like, when you ask, how can I serve? The universe is going to ask you, how can I serve you? It's just like, whatever you put out is what you're going to give back. And it's just like, when you start to put out a little bit, you start receiving exponential amounts. So yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Makes complete sense. How can people find you, Lucy, and um, take up your, your methods and learn what uh, you do? So we actually have this incredibly powerful 16 week program that allows people to intentionally rewire their subconscious mind and transform their identity so that way they can start taking massive action towards their goals. What we've done is we've condensed this into a six part series. It's a much smaller condensed training program that normally retails on our website for a thousand dollars. However, we have a special promo code for you and your audience. So wow. If you guys go, yeah, to ultimate success, blueprint.com, that is the website and use a promo code super normalized for this podcast. You'll actually be able to access and download the training at 
zero cost, completely for free. And you can start implementing these strategies, these tools, these techniques immediately. So that way you can start feeling better instantly and start creating the life of your dreams. So, wow. um, and oh, the other cool. thing is if, yeah, I'm like, we're so excited about it. Um, I'm kind of like on this mission of how can I serve? How can I give back? How can I positively impact the world? And mm. um, we've also created on social media, a Facebook group. So um, it's called Transformation Nation. So if anybody uh, on Instagram, I'm Coach Lucy Lynn, L-U-C-I-E-L-Y-N-N. -N. And then on Facebook, it's Lucy's Bubble, L-U-C-I-E-S Bubble. And we have put together this really cool community. It's called Transformation Nation. Anybody that is interested in essentially pushing themselves to become the best versions of themselves, that's what we're there to help people, support people. It's just a community of growth and accountability. And just like I talked about, like every single morning I meditate. That is my non-negotiable. As soon as my eyes open, boom, meditate. Um, and I decided that how can I help people, whether they're already seasoned meditators or if they're just learning um, how to meditate and they want to kickstart their journey and they need a little bit of help every single Friday morning at 1030 a.m. Eastern time zone. Um, I do a, a live gratitude meditation. We leave the replays up just in case, um, cause I know we're reaching people all over the world. So if 10 30 Eastern time isn't convenient, uh, they can always catch the replay and do it again Saturday morning. Um, and so that is, uh, just something that I'd be happy to invite all of your listeners to come experience. Uh, it's a, just a healing high vibrational experience. Brilliant. That sounds so good, Lucy. And I, I really appreciate what you're doing with the world and for the world and for the people out there. And um, thank you for offering up that um, uh, super normalized um, uh, voucher for helping people um, get on and learn your your systems and your methods and means. Uh, it, it's it's amazing. It's It's great talking to you and I've really appreciated your time. Oh, same, CJ. Thank you so much for having me on. I loved our time together. Excellent. Excellent. All right. I'm just going to say goodbye to the listeners. Well, that was a fun episode with Lucy. She's um, a beacon of light there to the world, I think, with um, her information and her knowledge and her understanding of pattern interrupts and methods and uh, means of change. So if you're actually looking for a, a way to change your life in a positive way by the sound of it, I think Lucy's got some um, tools and techniques there that actually will help. And she um uh gracefully offered, offered up that um coupon that uh that voucher for making it all free so jump over to um, lucy's site you'll be able to see that in the show notes and uh that uh, url again is ultimate success blueprint.com and use the um the, the code super normalized as she said which is really lovely of her to offer so um thank you again to lucy that was a really cool episode and uh, i've enjoyed our time if you've enjoyed this episode please like and subscribe if you're on on uh, youtube and if you're on a podcast app right now um please if you can share this to a friend if you think they will like it and uh, may gain benefit and also um yeah if you can also give me a a shout out on on the app itself go back to, into your app for your pod you know your podcast app and give us five stars and give us some nice words it actually helps people to um decide whether they should have a listen to so that'd be very cool thank you very much for listening to this one and until next episode bye for now